In today's video, I'm going to show you three different types of photo effects, starting with the basic photo with a frame with a Gaussian blur in the background, and second, doing a brush stroke reveal on a historical photo, and the third more advanced effect is creating a slideshow effect with the camera wiggle. And the best part about these effects is that you can apply it to any genre, for documentaries, Instagram stories, commercials, anything that you want. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> As always, the project files are just down below if you'd like to follow along. So for the first effect, I have the photo here in the timeline on video layer one. What I'm going to do is press the option key or the alt key on a PC and drag it up to video layer two. Now on the bottom one, this is going to be the background that we're gonna apply the blur effect to. But first we're gonna go up to effect controls and scale it up. Then from the effects panel, search for Gaussian blur and double click to apply it. Then we can increase the blurriness up so you can see that it's quite blurry in the background. So we can move this background into place and scale it down until it looks just right. Now with the top layer, let's select it and scale it down from effect controls. Now we wanna create a border around our photo. So go down to the toolbar and let's go down and select the rectangle tool. And then up in the program on a, can I talk up in the program on a, and up from the program monitor, click and drag to draw a generic rectangle. Now you'll see that there's a graphics layer on video layer three, and let's drag it out so it fits the entire duration of the photo effect. Next, we need to bring it beneath video layer two. So let's bring up the photo above the graphic layer, and then let's drag this down. Now we need to resize this graphic layer. So select it, go to essential graphics, select the shape zero one, and let's first change the fill to white, because it will look better. And then we can use the selection tool to drag it so the borders are all equal. Now that we have our white border, we can actually go to effects and add a drop shadow behind it. So search for drop shadow, double click to apply it to our graphic layer. First of all, we can increase the opacity to around 75 and we can increase the distance slightly and let's increase the softness so it's not as harsh. This is the before and this is the after. So now that we have our drop shadow, what we're going to do is animate this photo on top and the background. To do that, we're going to lasso and select video layer three and two, and we're going to right click and nest it as its own layer. And here, let's set our first keyframes on position, scale, and rotation. And for the starting point, let's make it slightly rotated and let's make it a bit smaller as well. Let's move over a bit to around five seconds and let's bring the rotation back to zero and let's scale it up. And to make the animation more smooth, lasso and select the last two keyframes here, control click and ease in. And now it's just going to be a bit more smoother of an animation as it comes in. If you want it to be faster, you can always bring these keyframes in and it will be a little bit faster. So now let's animate the background layer. First, let's make sure we get it into the place that we want so we can rotate it, we can scale it up a bit, and then we can set keyframes on position, scale, and rotation. Then we can move forward, and then we can scale it up, move it into place, and rotate it. So now as the photo one is animating towards us, the background is animating as well. It's a very simple effect. It's kind of a variation of the Ken Burns effect, right? So it's something that you can use in your documentary films. And welcome back, I'm Kelsey. If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, I'm running a live workshop this month on picture and picture effects. So if you'd like to register for that, you can click right up here or there's a link just down below. Also, I wanna thank Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. If you want some fast and easy photo templates, you can go to Envato Elements, search for photo slideshows, and you'll see that there are a ton of different templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro 10. So using these templates, you can save a ton of time. You can just drag and drop in your own photos or videos into the media placeholders and then render it out and you're done. Here are a few templates that are new to Envato Elements that I recommend. There's the Photo Explode Animator for Premiere Pro. There's the Multi-Screen Kit for Premiere Pro if you wanna use split screens. And there's the Instagram Slideshow Intro for Premiere Pro. And I forgot to mention, you can get all these templates and more for free. You can sign up for my seven day free trial using my link below and download as much as you want. And once you're like, heck yes, I wanna subscribe to Vanta Elements, you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month subscription, which is pretty cool. So thanks Vanta Elements for sponsoring today's video. And now let's jump back in to photo effect number two. For this historical photo effect, I've downloaded three assets from Envato Elements. The first one is this brush stroke reveal, which is right here in my project panel, a print overlay, 
that looks like a newspaper with just random titles, and then also some burnt paper edges. So that's one other benefit of Elements is that it comes with a ton of graphic elements, which I use all the time in my video. So I've linked to these three assets just down below. The first thing I'm going to do is take this burnt paper, drag it on top of our photo here, and let's scale it down. And then from opacity, go to blend mode and select multiply. And next let's add the print matters art on top and go to effect controls again, and let's scale it down and let's go to blend mode. And this time we're gonna choose overlay and reduce the opacity to like 40%. So that way we can see some of the titles come through like an old newspaper look. And I'm going to select the photo and just scale it up so it fills the frame. Now I'm going to click and select all three layers, control click and nest it. And now I'm going to take this brush stroke overlay and drag and drop it onto video layer two. So now how do we get this to interact with the photo on video layer one? This is where we're gonna go to track mat key from effects and double click to apply it to our nested layer. Go to effect controls. And from here underneath matte, we're gonna choose video two. Go to composite and rather than matte alpha, do matte luma. Now the paintbrush strokes reveals the photo. Now it has the black behind it because it's only gonna fill in the area of the brush strokes. If you like how that looks, that's great. You can leave it as is. If you want the paper texture behind though, what we can do is bring up these two layers. But when we do that, we have to go back to the nest and change the mat to video layer three because we had to move it up. And then we can open up the nest and take this burnt paper, copy it, command C or control C. And then on this clip, command V to paste it. So that way we have the paper texture behind again. So that way it's revealed on top of the paper. Now let's go into the advanced slideshow effect. So for this effect, it's going to be best to first create a placeholder sequence for each photo. So if we have four photos, we need to create four sequences. So I'm gonna right click on the negative space, new item sequence, and I'll call this one photo one. And you can make it any dimension you want by going to the frame size here and typing in the new dimension. I'm going to keep it 1920 by 1080 and press okay. And then I'll repeat this process for all four photos. Now I'm going to open up all of these sequences here and I'm going to place a photo in each sequence. So now we have our photo in every single sequence here, but now we need to lengthen the photo to the duration of the entire slideshow, which will come in handy later on. So let's say we want each one to be 15 seconds. We can go here and type in 15 seconds and then lengthen out this photo to meet the playhead. So we'll do that for every photo here. One hour later. So now that each photo is 15 seconds in length, we're going to nest each one as its own placeholder. So we're going to control click and press nest and call this placeholder one. And let's do the same to all three. Now that each photo is nested into its own placeholder, which can be replaced later on, we can create the crop mask. So that way the photos will have a rounded corner. So go up to opacity and click on create four point polygon mask. And then from here, hover over the corner until you get that rotation symbol, then press shift and click to scale this up. Go to mask expansion. And then here we can click and increase this to create rounded corners as much as you want. And now we can click on this mask and press command C or control C to copy it. Then we can go to photo two and go to opacity and command V to paste it. So let's do that to all of them. So now that it's transparent, it will make it easier for us to type out a caption. You can go to the type tool here and we can type out a caption that says like photo one Dolomites, for example. Then we can go to essential graphics and we can change this to black. We can also change the font type. Let's change it to type star to make it a little bit more retro looking. And let's scale this down to around 35 and let's reposition it at the top. And then we can duplicate this layer by control clicking on it and let's move it to be right aligned and let's move the position over to the other side. And here we can just put like a date. So if we wanted to call this May 2019, for example, and let's drag this out. So it'll be the exact duration as the placeholder. Then we can copy this photo text on each placeholder. So the setup is done. We have the text, we have the nicely cropped photos, but now we need to create an entire slideshow setup longer sequence that we can sequentially order all the photos and then add the animation. So let's go to the negative space here and let's create a new sequence. And this time let's go to settings and instead of 
1920 by 1080, I'm gonna multiply. So the little multiply symbol is this little asterisk times it by six. So now you can see it's a really long strip. The first thing we wanna do is create a background mat. We can use an eggshell color. So we can control click, go to new item and go to color mat. And from here, press okay. And let's bring this into kind of a brownish eggshell color. And let's drag and drop this onto video layer one. So now we can bring down photo one and we can bring down photo two. And we don't actually need the audio layers here. So we can press command L or control L to unlink it and just delete those audio layers. But photo two is directly on top. So we can go to effect controls and actually move it over like this. And then we also wanna have photo four on the left because we want photos on either side to kind of emulate the photo slideshow. So I'm gonna go back to project and drag photo four here. And I'm going to select this and go to effect controls and actually drag this on the other side. And now let's go to photo three. And if you don't want the audio to come in, a quick tip is you can actually turn off the source patching on audio one. So when we drag down sequence three, we only get the video, which is a nice tip. And lastly, let's go here and bring in photo four again, and this time bring it over to the right. So you can see the idea here that you can create a strip so that way we're going to animate it along here. And now we need to nest all these photos together. So click and lasso and select all of the photos, control click and nest. And we can just call this slideshow setup. Now we need to go and create a brand new sequence. We'll just call it 1080p full HD slideshow. Now we need to drag in this long strip into the sequence and keep existing settings. Now we have this really long strip inside of the 1080p from which we can animate it. So let's select this and let's go up to the effect controls here. And from here, we can animate the photos to go side to side. To do that, let's go to effects and let's go to transform and let's double click to apply transform. And the reason why we're using transform for the animation is that way, if we ever want to resize the photos, we can just use the main motion controls to just resize them a little bit smaller. So from here, we're gonna go and we're gonna click on position because we're just gonna animate the position. So for this moment, we wanna hold on this photo for a little bit. And then right here, let's click to create another keyframe and then move forward a little bit. And let's go ahead and move this over to the left so we can get the next photo in frame. It holds on this photo for a couple of seconds and then it animates over. Now it's a little bit slow, so I'm gonna zoom in here and make this faster. Let's bring this keyframe in closer so it's a quicker transition. Make it smoother by control clicking, temporal interpolation and ease in. Now I can repeat this for every photo. Now we have our animation happening. So it's going side to side to the left, but what if we want to add a little bit of a wiggle on top so that way it looks a little bit more realistic. This is where we can go to the project panel again, control click, and this time we're going to create an adjustment layer. And from here, we're going to drag and drop the adjustment layer on top of our timeline here. And again, we're going to double click to create a transform effect on this adjustment layer, then go to effect controls. And here we're just going to animate the position to create a slight wiggle. Before we create the position wiggle, we wanna scale this up to around 105. So that way we literally can have some wiggle room when we animate the position. So let's create toggle animation to create our first keyframe, move forward a little bit, and then we can just slightly move our photo and then go forward a little bit and just move over to create a slight wiggle and just repeat this for the duration of the entire timeline. Now we have this slight camera wiggle on top just to give it that extra oomph compared to just the static side to side movement. Now we can go on and add some more cool effects on top of this adjustment layer. So for this adjustment layer, I'm gonna go up to clip and rename it wiggle just to keep track of it. And then I'm gonna drag another adjustment layer on top. And this is where we're going to apply a lens distortion effect. So double click to apply the lens distortion. And from here we can play around with all these parameters. So for curvature, we can do something to make it stretch on the sides. So maybe around minus eight and then vertical decentering minus one, just a slight amount. And then one for horizontal two and minus two. So you can see it added a little bit of warping to the effect. This is where we can actually go in on the long strip and we can resize it to make it a little bit smaller. And you'll notice that you see the background, the transparency. And this is actually where it makes sense to drag in the color map behind them here. So we can drag this up and then go to effects, go back to project panel, and then we can drag and drop the eggshell mat beneath. So that way we don't see that gap. Now with the distortion, it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and 
let's rename this clip lens distortion. And then we can add another adjustment layer to create a Gaussian blur on the sides. Let's go up here and let's search for Gaussian blur and let's double click to apply it. And then from effect controls, we can go over to Gaussian blur and let's increase the blurriness to like 29. But here, this is where we're gonna create some masking just on the edges, create an ellipse mask. We're just gonna drag it over to the corner here and let's drag this down and let's drag this out a bit. Now the Gaussian blur is only going to be affecting this side. And what we can do again is actually control click, copy command V to paste it and we can move this this one, this duplicate copy on the right. So that way the center photo is in focus and it gets blurry on the sides. We can also add a little bit of expansion on the mask around 64 and let's copy that over on the first one. So now we have our two side masks to give it some distortion on the sides. And from here, we can also go to Lumetri Color from the Creative tab. We can go down and choose Kodak 5205 to see how that looks, it looks pretty good. And we can add some faded film if we like. So this was the before and the after. And the last effect is optional, but I downloaded this vintage dirt and grain overlay. It has like these like specks that we can put in a film burn on top. So we can take this and drag and drop it on top of video layer five. And we can actually press R to go to the rate stretch tool and drag it out to meet the end of this clip here. Go back to V to the selection tool, go to effect controls. And from opacity, we're going to choose screen and then we're going to scale it up so we can get rid of this kind of film hole here. We don't want that. And now when we play it back, we have these little specks on top, which add a little bit of a vintage look. The next thing is optional. You can add sound effects and music, and I can go here to the final effect to show you how it looks. And if you're like, this is a lot of work, I don't wanna create it from scratch. I actually made this into a template, which is part of my photo slideshow pack, which you can check out just down below and right up here. So that's all for the photo effects, but this brings me to the product of the week, which is audio. So what sets audio apart from other music licensing sites is that you can get an unlimited plan for life. If it's a bit too expensive for you to buy the lifetime license, they also offer an audio pro plan where you can get unlimited sound effects and music. And you can use the discount code right here to get 70% off. So you only pay $59 for a full year of unlimited music and sound effects. And the quality of their music is really impressive. Just by browsing their filter search, it has everything that you expect from genre, instrumental versus lyrical, everything that you need to search for high quality tracks. If you wanna explore the lifetime audio plan or the audio pro plan, you can click right here. And if you wanna learn some more photo effects, you can click right over here. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope it helps you out. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.